Well, Doc Jello, welcome to the Global Filipino Magazine. Thank you for gracing our interview um, this afternoon. Um, sa pong karangalan na uh, maging part kayo ng list ng the Icon Awards. <laughs> Isa po kayo sa mga inspiring Filipinos ng, ng UAE. And it's, it's global po. It's international. And at some point, gusto po namin na malaman, ma marinig ang story ninyo. Uh, Doc Jello, would you mind to um, share us your, your journey? Your journey from maybe from the beginning um, up until the the peak of your career. Mm. Hello, po. Uh, mabuhay to <laughs> the Global Filipino Magazine and marami marami salamat. Thank you for including me in, as one of the finalists of the Thank Global you. Filipino Icons Awards. Um, my name is Dr. Angelo Nino Santos. I'm from. Um, Metro Manila, I'm from Pasig City in the Philippines. I'm a GP or a licensed general practitioner. I came to Dubai uh, 2014, so roughly seven years now. Um, I came from Malaysia prior to Dubai. I taught in a medical university in Pinang, Malaysia for three years, that's 2010 to 2013. And then prior to that, I have been into private medical practice in various clinics and then um, in uh, in the Philippines, I taught in uh, College of Nursing in Quezon City and uh, uh, until now I am very proud to be a part of the academic life of most global, uh, com globally competitive nurses and medical professionals around the globe. Um, it's heartwarming to feel and it's very proud for me. Whenever I travel, um, I meet my former students who are now globally working as nurses or as doctors. When I traveled to Moscow, I met my former Malaysian medical students there. And then when I traveled to Madrid and London, usually they treat me and uh, I'm very proud of what they have become. And most importantly, I'm very, par uh, I'm very proud. I take pride uh, because of their gratitude until, until uh, today, I mean, all throughout the years. Um, they remember me as a part, even if a little part of their academic life. Um, I have a lot of students here in UAE as well who are working as nurses. So basically that's my uh, bread and butter. I have been teaching, uh, of, uh, I taught for 10 years in medical school and nursing school both in the Philippines and in Manila. And then when I moved in Dubai in 2014, I, I tried to evolve because I cannot practice here uh, as a medical practitioner because I taught in Malaysia for three years. So they have uh, the Filipino, um, the Global Filipino Magazine, po kasi is um, affiliated with the Filipino Institute, and it's also like mm. an institute. Yes, here in the, the we short courses. We have short courses. Mm -hmm. We have like diploma courses, mm -hmm. and some of the medical courses that we have. Meron po kami um, nursing assistant. Mm -hmm. Meron po kami uh, caregiver courses. Mm -hmm. So um, very much into academic din po kami wow. Yes. Uh, so when going to the, the academic part, po no? Um, how is it teaching? Paano po yung, um, earlier you said um, may mga estudyante kayo nakikilala. Mm -hmm. like, how, is it, um, how is it being part of their like, uh, academic life? Paano po yung, yung experience when it comes to teaching? What does it give you? Um, and how did you come to that part of mm -hmm. teaching from practicing um, mm -hmm. medicine? In, the, in, in uh, my medical practice, um, ever since I'm uh, a student, an intern, we come across with different patients. Iba ibang pasyente, iba ibang hospital, iba ibang klinika. However, in teaching, when I ventured into teaching um, medical surgical nursing first for the first eight, eight years in the Philippines, um, it's very challenging. I mean, we we all heard the, the cliche that teachers are the, the uh, are the uh, are second to mothers? Yes, when second part, parents. Second parents, rather. Yeah, thank you. Um, so it's very challenging because you prepare every day, every single lecture you prepare because <laughs> uh, the, the students themselves are very challenging. Um, you may recall that most of the Filipinos are kababayans back home. Um, most of them have uh, ventured into second and third course yes. and enrolled into nursing to, to seek 
uh, employment in the U.S. as nurses. Even yes. so, I I had students, former students who were lawyers, who were bankers, who were um, even doctors took up nursing. Yes. So imagine uh, the pressure that uh, is on my that was on my shoulders yes. uh, in front of the class. You really have to challenge yourself, not the students, but yourself, um, to be better or at par with them and to deliver, you know, what needs to be delivered, the lecture sure. itself, and to share your medical experience um, apart from the theoreticals. When I moved to Malaysia, I was given um, a responsibility to be a part of the lecturers for um, pre med, and then we have a special class, the cream of the crop. Uh, the, the first two years uh, of medicine uh, were in Malaysia and the second half will be either in Moscow or in Ireland oh, um, yes. where our uh, former university in Malaysia was affiliated to. So the pressure was doubled, yeah. even tripled because back then moving from the Philippines I came now to a foreign land you know although it's an ASEAN neighbor however the pressure is doubled tripled because you're dealing with diversity, diverse culture, diverse religion, diverse belief, and you're in a foreign land, not competing, but you know, working side by side with foreign colleagues. Yes. So for, from 2010 to 2013, I, I worked as a medical lecturer in Penang, um, in Malaysia, one of the medical universities there back then. And then I decided to move to Dubai in 2014. What's the biggest learning that you've had, um, like, with the different countries that you've been to, you, you, when it comes to like career, life, um, comparing Philippines to Malaysia to UAE, I don't, I mean, the biggest like life lesson that, mm -hmm. that you would that, that you learned and you would like other uh, Filipinos um, around the globe uh, would like to learn from you. Yeah, thank you. Um, apart from being a lecturer and uh, a licensed GP in the Philippines and a medical lecturer in Malaysia and in the Philippines. Yes, I am a traveler. Um, I'm, I have a travel blog uh, running for 14 years now. It was awarded by Ministry of Tourism Malaysia twice as uh, Best Expat Blog. It's so, it was a proud moment two times, two consecutive years, 2013 and 2012, to be able to wear a Barong Tagalog in, in Kuala Lumpur to accept the awards for the Best Expat Blog. And then you, you're asking me what is the most important or relevant Last life second. lesson yes. that I learned from traveling. I've traveled to, uh, to 57 countries in five continents already. That's um, few, I mean, not even half of the total number of countries and territories around the globe. But um, one thing that I am most proud of, some of, the, some of my trips, some of my adventures, some of my travels, may not be that uh, life-changing or sometimes it may be mundane or quite yes. simple mm -hmm. but in simplest community in the most humble old towns there you meet people i i, I met um, what i i love most about traveling is meeting people that's true yes. uh, you learn from their lifestyle it's humbling to see a, a, a nepali in Kathmandu uh, running her day-to-day -day life as simple as it is. Yes. Um, comparing to our lifestyle here learning in Dubai. Learning from other culture. Didn't yeah, learning from, learning from other culture, learning from other uh, people's traditions and cultures and day-to-day -day living. Yes. It's very enriching. It's something that uh, people will not uh, encounter in any books or any yes. classrooms. Traveling, I think, is the best teacher in yes. the world as well. Among the 57 countries, like, which struck you the most? <laughs> 70, uh, you said five continents. Please, yes. um, ah, hindi natin po yung name na yun. <laughs> all the fifty-seven countries. That these are continents that we've been to, and then, um, like, which country like really struck you most? Struck you the most in, in what sense? Um, but, uh, like in, in in general, in general um, outlook or point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, um, can, I like, always give us. Also, I, I like, always, <laughs> I always tell whoever this is one of the frequently asked questions to me what is your mo most favorite country or destination yes. but um, your query it was um, which among the 57 countries struck me the most um, probably it's too general but uh, literally something that you would like to go back mm. or yes mm. um, like maybe 
um, you would like to, to imp- I don't know, share, um, live there probably? <laughs> One of the most, uh, Im- bu- most beautiful destinations that I've been to are in the South America and Europe. Uh, okay, yes. uh, I love countries or destinations with cultures. Um, something that are different from the tropical country that we were born with. Yes. I also love the the, Ar- the Arctic. Oh, Whenever yeah. I see uh, snow or you know something snow that we don't have, <laughs> something that we don't have, um, I, I, I'm really fascinated and awestruck with them. But the most beautiful countries that I've been to in terms of people, in terms of food and culture, are. Uh, in random order, I love Argentina oh. um, and Brazil. In Argentina and Brazil, I've been to almost end of the world. Um, I literally was surprised that I found myself crying in crocodile tears when I saw Iguazu Falls. Um, mm-hmm. It's a massive falls in between Argentina and Brazil. And also, I, I went to Patagonia in Argentina. I didn't expect that in my lifetime I will come across face-to-face glacier, ice, the one you saw in Titanic, the, the, yeah. similar to that. I mean, um, A big I, of wall, I like, um, never, I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would come to that place. That um, it's not only awesome, um, visually stunning, but it made me realize that there there is really a higher being among us, regardless of our religion, whether we're Catholics or Muslims or Jehovah's or whatever. I mean, if there is no higher creator, I'm not being religious, but (laughs) during my travels, uh, what I probably, this is my my reply to your question, what struck me the most or the most important lesson, life-changing lesson that is every travel, every adventure, it's a reminder for me that there is God. Wow, yes. Um, because uh, if there is no God, who created that massive false? I mean, it's so beautiful, it's stunning, massive, yes. it's it stunning, it's Someone beyond words. created that. Very incredible. Yes. I mean, uh, we all know about science, the Big Bang Theory. Yes. We respect the, all those theories that we have learned in school. But if we do not believe in, in higher being, whatever we call Him, or whatever religion is, if we don't believe that there is God, I mean, how come that I have... Uh, travel to that edge of the world. Having said that, those travels that you've been to and um, like the careers that you have, um, I mean the career that you are into right now, um, what is your message to the global Filipino um, when it comes to um, pursuing their dreams? Mm-hmm. Um, you said in your, ma- in your, in your statements a magazine like um, uh, you work hard, but you also play hard. Yes. So yes. yes. Uh, please give us your, your message to the global Filipino when it comes to career and still having fun and living life. Mm. Uh, problems, problems come and go. Um, it's part of life. I mean, everybody knows that there's still pandemic uh, worldwide. It's not only in the Philippines. It's not only here in the UAE, but it's worldwide. So, whatever our problem is, whether it's related to health issues such as pandemic or personal whatever our struggle is i mean it it's how we react to it it's how we deal with our problems problems come and go Um, every one of us even the wealthiest the richest the most famous people in the world has problems but um, if we will not lose hope and uh, whatever your religion is whatever your belief is if we remain faithful I mean, we, we will come through any, any struggles, any challenges. So the bottom part of it is we have to stay strong, not only for ourselves, but for our families. Uh, just like us here in the UAE um, or in any parts of the world where Filipinos are working abroad, uh, we had a lot of sacrifices, not only for ourselves, but for our families and for our loved ones because we are currently living out outside our comfort zones and working abroad. So just hang in there. Um, we work, we are here to work, but uh, as I've said in my former, in the former article written for me by the magazine, um, we have to love ourselves more. I mean, we cannot work and work and work for our loved ones if we will not spare some time for our work. So 
love ourselves um, regardless we have pandemic or we, regardless we have um, problems in life we have to um, enjoy life life is short it, it's cliche as it, is, it may sound but um, we have to live the fullest you know these cliches are are uh, you know redundant but they are true so we have to love ourselves and live our life to the fullest and thank you so much dr jello maraming salamat po <laughs>